Mike, thanks for um, taking the time to chat to us. Obviously, it's been a difficult day for you. Uh, perhaps if you wouldn't mind just kicking off by giving us a bit of a rundown from your side as to, to what happened this morning. Yeah, we were just going up wind. Um, well, I say just going up wind. It was sort of 35 to 38 knots of wind. And um, we had started going into very much a boat preservation mode where we uh, had slowed the boat down. Um, instead of doing sort of 12 and a half knots, we were starting to back it down to sort of a, between 10 and a half and, and 11 and a half kind of thing. Um, all felt very comfortable. And... Um, then there are a couple of pretty weird bangs, not sure of the sequence of events. Um, didn't think anything of it for, you know, had a look around and didn't think anything of it. And then suddenly the guys noticed the boat had gone pretty radically bow down and um, rushed forward. Uh, actually, I rushed forward from the nav station and realized that, um, you know, we had quite a lot of, well, one of the other guys, we got there at the same time, we realized we had a lot of water up the front. Um, and yeah, it was just uh, very quickly into getting everyone out of their bunks into life jackets, slowing the boat down as quickly as possible, and then um, getting the boat tacked over and, and heading to land in case our situation um, got worse quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, now that we're tied up to the dock, um, it seems that uh, we certainly weren't uh, over-exaggerating. And, um, and we're pretty lucky to have the boat uh, back at the dock, that is for sure. And um, now that you've moored up there and you've looked at the damage, can you as ascertain what's happened and um, what the, how you can treat it, how you can look at, repair it? Uh, it's very early days for us to, um, to know um, what it's going to entail, but... Um, I think I can say with reasonable confidence that, um, you know, the boat isn't going to make it on its own bottom to Cape Town. Right. Uh, could you describe some of the damage for us? We're missing um, over about a three, two and a half, three metre section from our chine that we have on either side in the bow. Um, we're missing the outside laminate. Um, of the of the hull, and it's um, uh, in fact now that we've able to open the watertight um, door, we can see a, a strip of about two meters long by forty mil wide um, straight into the sea. So um, yeah, we were very lucky that uh, we didn't lose the whole structural integrity of the of the boat. And do you think the delamination was caused by a, a something physical hitting it, or was it more uh, just a breakdown in the uh, in the whole exterior? I mean, I think, uh, to be honest, I think what I, I'm pretty, I'm almost certain we would have hit something, um, which would have opened something small, um, and then you know the water pressure when you're pounding in those waves. Um, for me, that's the most likely scenario. We did hear. Um, a couple of sort of bangs, but, you know, it's a pretty noisy environment um, out here when you're going up wind and 35 knots of wind. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really too early to say. Um, and, uh, yeah, all, all we know is that we're missing quite a big chunk of our lovely boat. Well, it's very sad to hear that, Mike. And what what's your thinking in terms of where you are right now? You're in Puerto uh, Motril. Um, obviously, it's probably not the best place to be undertaking repairs. Do you have an immediate plan in place for the next 24 hours? No, not really. Our shore crew's on their way here. What we didn't want to do is, I mean, we've got you know all sorts of plans and 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 plans in place for this sort of thing happening. Um, the reality is, though, it's still blowing 35 knots to 40 knots out there. This was the only port that we felt comfortable um, to get the boat to without... One thing we were worried about was going too fast, putting too much pressure on our watertight door. If the door had then burst open, um, you know, we would have uh, been in a lot of trouble um, because the boat probably would have sunk. Um, so, you know, we've limped in here. We've borrowed some fenders off the yacht club. Um, we've tied the boat up with our jib sheet. Um, our shore manager and boat captain are on their way here as quickly as possible. And, um, 
yeah, we didn't know whether we were going to be um, plucking the boat out and doing a quick repair and being able to turn it around in our 48 hour window or whether um, whether it was going to be more major. And there's no doubt, unfortunately, it's uh, quite a lot more major than what we hoped. Uh, and it's actually more major than what we feared. Yeah. And and can you just, I mean, it must be difficult and I know you're still reflecting on it, but can you put into words just how you're feeling personally uh, with this, with what's happened this morning? Yeah, bitterly, bitterly disappointed, you know, not just, you know, um, and I'm not even thinking of my, myself here. I'm just, you know, I think of all the work that went into to get this boat on the start line in such a condensed, you know, in such a condensed uh, format. And what's, what's sad about it is it's nothing that any of us have done or any of any of the team have done have let us down here. It's not like, you know, the boat broke down due to we were being ill-prepared or the boat broke, you know, or we had any failure, which caused more failure. This was just, unfortunately, something which has happened and it's, um, it's, it's bitten us as badly as it could have bitten us. But, but we're, we're fighters and we're, um, our goal is still very achievable in this race. Our goal is to, is to take some scalps get this boat on the podium a few times and, and get in everyone's way and see how many points we can earn. And, and that, you know, we can still do that. There's no doubt about it. So our goal is still very achievable. We're, we need to, um, the race is on for us, though, to make sure we can uh, get to the next, you know, get to the Cape Town import race cause, and that, that will be a race in itself. Yeah, and no, no doubt that that's the attitude that that you've always had, Mike, and and you know that's fantastic. And just finally, for me, uh, Justin, uh, I'm here with Justin as well. I know he wants to just ask a quick question. But finally, for me, obviously, you must have heard about uh, Ian Walker in Abu Dhabi. Uh, what, what was your initial thoughts on that before this had happened to you? Anyway, did it... I understand you sailed yeah, pretty close I mean, to them. Obviously... In fact, I understand you were like 50 yards away uh, from the guys. Yeah, exactly. And we um, we were about we were quite upset at the fisherman that was flashing their lights at us. Um, because we couldn't see no nets that we were going to run into. So, um, yeah, you you don't you never assume that it's what you know one of your competitors has has broken their mast, you know. Um, and uh, you know we were devastated to hear that uh, that that it happened to them. You know, truly devastated. You you wouldn't wish that on anyone because uh, and like us. You know, they'd worked so hard and, and, you know, to have something fail, um, you know, which I, I've got no idea what, what, if they've got any idea what failed. But, you know, just, it, you know, it's it bitterly disappointing. And um, no, our hearts were with them. We, we sent them a message to, to uh, with, our, with our thoughts. And, um, and like us, I'm sure they're fighting hard to get back on the track as quickly as possible. Yeah. Hi, Mike. It's Justin. Um, I just wanted you to yes. just clarify on the, the hull damage. Can you just help us understand how big the hole is? Is it something you could stick your hand through or your head through? Uh, the big issue, Justin, is, is how much of the outside laminate is missing. Um, I'm not sure if you, if you look at a photo of our boat. The boat's got those spray rails um, on the bow. Um and probably a two and a half metre section below the spray rail, from one spray rail all the way around to the other spray rail. Um, so right at the bottom of the boat is um, is basically missing three quarters of the laminate. In fact, could actually be missing in some sections the core as well, <laughs> by the look of it. Um, and um, we knew we were in quite a lot of bother in the bilge pumps um, started picking up carbon splinters from the inside, so um, yeah, we knew we knew that uh, it wasn't it wasn't all roses inside that watertight door. Well, listen, Mike. Um, um, listen, thanks so much for chatting to us, and really, really sorry to to hear about all the stuff that's been happening to you today. And but no doubt, as you say, you're a fighter, and you guys will will be back there to um, to to the bitter end. No, I'm sure. No 